You know, I really thought that this would be the week. I don't know why, but for the last several days, I had this gut feeling that this was going to be the video where I am standing up in front of you all and revealing about how the Jaguars ended their 19 game losing streak by beating the Tennessee Titans. However, evil has prevailed in this situation. And I have so much to talk about. I normally try to keep my videos between 10 to 15 minutes because after that point, no one cares what you have to say. No one listens to you um, or even well before that. But I have so much to talk about. So I'm going to dive right into it. The Jaguars have three things. They have three things that I have zero doubt about in my head. They have a good wide receiver. They have a star running back, James Robinson. And they have a franchise quarterback. All good things. Outside of that, the cupboard is empty, devoid of any talent, devoid of any talent whatsoever. <clears throat> Trevor Lawrence has clearly, obviously, if you have watched from week one to today, every single play, the entirety of the game, everything that's happened, Trevor Lawrence looks like a totally different quarterback. Awesome. What more could you ask? He's as advertised. Still makes a few little rookie errors here and there. He technically had an interception today, but honestly, I don't even count that. It was literally the last play of the game. He's just kind of throwing it in the end zone, hoping something happens. I don't, I don't count that. But when the game mattered, he's gone two weeks now without any turnovers. He's scoring with his arm and his legs. He's been efficient. His, even the passes that he doesn't complete now are on the money. They're just drops. Or the, def or the defensive player just makes a really good play on the ball. Um, Trevor is evolving. And just these five short weeks, he is a totally different quarterback. Which is really all we could ask for. It's all we could ask for. Because Trevor... Lawrence is the only hope and the only anything, anything that this team has. Oh my God. Had the Jaguars won a game, another game last year, or even two games, because we were in a couple overtime games last year and we were stuck with Zach Wilson who isn't showing that same progression over with the Jets. And we had Zach Wilson along with everything else that we have and with Urban Meyer, and I'm going to get to him. God, God help us. God help us. Not only would we more than likely break the all-time record for the 26 straight losses, well, I guess that wouldn't make sense because we would have won extra games last year. But we would have started a new streak, okay, because we, we would have nothing. Have I given up on Urban Meyer? No. No. Have I reached Gus Bradley level frustration with Urban Meyer? Not even close. Have I reached Doug Marone level? No. No. I haven't approached that. But I'd be lying if I said that I'm starting to see some things I don't particularly care for. I'm a wrestling fan, okay? I like wrestling. And what is the biggest thing about wrestling, The big, like the biggest point to wrestling? It's to work up a crowd. To get the crowd invested and amped up and excited and what they're watching and what they're looking at. That is the ultimate goal of professional professional wrestling is to get a reaction out of the crowd. Tony Khan, who cares more about AEW wrestling than he does my Jaguars, 
you would have swore that at one point in this game, Urban Meyer was trying to do a little bit of AEW work by pumping up the crowd. I'm sorry. Yay for Kayla Von Chason for finally getting in the backfield and finally making a play after how many games? How many, how many games? And I'm not just talking about this year, I'm talking about last year. How long? And he's finally hitting the quarterback. That was not a fumble. It never was a fumble. Watching it live, I was like, you see this play a million times throughout the entirety of the NFL. There was zero chance, zero chance that that call was going to be reversed and the Jaguars keep that ball. I was begging for Urban Meyer to not throw the flag. Now, I had a feeling it wouldn't matter anyway because the Titans would keep the ball and they would just say, here you go, Derek. Here you go. Here's the ball. And the Titans would probably end up scoring on that drive. And sure enough, sure enough, that's what happened. So the timeout that we lost with the challenge in the end didn't matter. But Urban Meyer threw the challenge flag because TIA Bank Field was actually full today and sounded amazing. Sounded amazing. The first quarter, most of the whole first half, when it was still a game, and even when the Jags started to make a little bit of a comeback at the end, the bank was rocking, and it made me happy. It made me wish I was there. Okay? And Urban gave them something to cheer for, a false hope, and all the players on the sideline were like, yeah, throw the challenge flag, and I'm sitting on my couch. Don't do it, Urban. Don't do it. He did it. And then when they came back from commercial and said the ruling on the field stands, I said, well, Urban, I told you not to do it. Stupid. Stupid. You know what else is stupid? Can I tell you what's really stupid? What's really sticking in my craw today? Twice. Twice. In the last two weeks, the Jaguars have had the ball, the one yard line, fourth and goal. And there's two things that they refuse to do. Give the ball to James Robinson, who is not only the second best player on your team. Actually, you know what? He is better at his position than Trevor is at his right now. James Robinson is the best player on this football team. Okay? They refuse to give him the ball at the one-yard line. I don't know why. And what else they refuse to do is they refuse to say, hey, six foot six quarterback that we took first overall behind one of the best centers in the NFL, just go reach over. There you go. Jags are right back in the game. Now, that sh it shouldn't have come to that anyway, because how many times on that the second Trevor Lawrence scramble touchdown do we see a play like that, even if, if there's not... Um, conclusive evidence they stick with the calling on the field we see that all the time but in this instance the nfl was like nah fam nah we're overturning that ish sure enough sure enough they refuse to give the ball to james robinson when it matters now they're doing better he, he had over 100 yards in the first half and it was crazy crazy and do you think them feeding James Robinson and Trevor's rapid progression. Do you think that's linked? Do you, what, what do you guys think? you think that has anything to do with the other? I have like this slight sneaky suspicion that maybe it does. Maybe it does. I don't know. You guys tell me in the comments what you think. Brandon Linder ended up getting hurt on that play, which... They did not give the ball to James Robinson. They did not quarterback sneak with Trevor Lawrence, but they ran it outside with Carlos Hyde and it got blown up and just, I walked out of the room. I was, on, I was, this is what I do. This is what I do. I do this like an idiot and I stare at my TV and I get all close to it on big plays like that. I really should record myself doing it. You guys would probably laugh at me. And as soon as that play happened, I threw my hat on the ground and I walked out of the room for a minute. Because I just couldn't look. I just couldn't look. 
Urban Meyer each week continues to do things that cause me to have a little bit of concern. The, his press conference afterwards, when asked about that situation, where if the Jaguars score, there's plenty of time in the fourth quarter. It's a one possession game. Actually, it's less than that. It's less than a, it's less than a touchdown. It's like a five. I think it would have been a five four point game. And if we had a field goal kicker, it, I think it would have been tied. Like, anyway, I don't want to scream too much. When asked about that, he said, well, Trevor's not comfortable with quarterback sneaking. Five minutes later, Trevor Lawrence gets up there and says, yeah, I'm all, I, I'm all for it. I, I have no problem doing the quarterback sneak. Does anyone else think that's a little bit of an issue? Because I certainly do. I certainly do. I hope that the Jaguars beat the Dolphins next week because I want to see this thing turned around. I really do. But man, I... you guys, I don't even know. It's and it's, it's the same thing. It's always, well, you know, if this play hadn't happened and if that play didn't happen and if this play did that with the other thing, maybe in this timeline of the multiverse, the Jaguars maybe only would have lost by a field goal. I'm tired of that, okay? Was the, the Dan Arnold fumble was that kind of BS? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. But you know what? The Jaguars went right down the field the next possession and scored. So it shouldn't have mattered. If you take care of your business, and if you're a good team, good teams overcome that crap. Shaquille Griffin, I think the Titans' first possession, or the Titans' second possession, one of Ryan Tannehill's first plays of the game threw it right to Shaquille Griffin it would have been an easy pick six easy six points for the Jaguars drops it how much money are we paying him how much drops it stone hands can't catch it I guess that's why he's not playing wide receiver it's it's this stuff and yeah like the phantom call on Trey Herndon or Clay Brooks, whichever bum, sorry bum it was. Like, I, I get it, guys. I'm sitting here screaming at my TV like you are. But at the end of the day, good teams overcome that stuff. And the problem is that Urban Meyer, even if all this scandal stuff, all this controversy, even if it ends up blowing over and Urban is successful with us, it will take a while. And not because, oh, teamwork takes a while to build and you gotta give it time and all oh, teamwork and not all that crap, because that doesn't work in the pros. Okay, that feel good, rah, rah, bull crap, it doesn't work. It's not real in the pros. What is real is David Caldwell's horrific drafting that has set the Jaguars back, even with him out of the building. Even with him out of the building, it is still setting us back. Also, what's setting us back is we had the most draft space, or draft space. Well, we had that too. The, we had the most cap space in the NFL. Pretty much redid our whole defense. And they're horrid. They're horrid. I will say, holding Derrick Henry to 30 yards in the first half, that's impressive. That's impressive. They can't, they couldn't cover me. They couldn't cover me. I could probably line up a tight end for the uh, the Dolphins next week and probably get at least three catches, maybe like mm, maybe like forty some yards, three catches, forty some yards, and a touchdown. Throw me in the red zone. I could probably do it. Awful, awful. This season isn't about winning, although it doesn't make it any less frustrating, and it mentally wears on me just like every other year. 
this season ultimately is about Trevor. I don't know if the Jaguars have the coaching or the head coach situation correct, but we have the quarterback correct. I have confidence in Trevor Lawrence. I think by Thanksgiving time, especially by Christmas time, there won't be a doubt in any Jaguar fan's mind, if there is now, that we have our guy going forward. The type of success that the Chargers are having right now with Justin Herbert and how they've built their team, hopefully by next year we can experience the same thing. Um, let's hope. Let's hope. All right, guys, that's all I got for you today. If you're not subscribed to this channel and if you love the Jaguars and if you hate those filthy, stinking, rotten Tennessee Titans, hit subscribe. If you watch this video all the way to this part, I love you and appreciate you. Let me know down in the comments if you watch the whole thing, what your thoughts are on today's game. I'd love to interact with you guys and tell me what you guys think. Hit like if you're excited for the Dolphins game next week. Like I said, hit subscribe. Go Jags.